this is your Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, March 29th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Samsung is the world's largest smartphone maker by shipments. But the smartphone market is in a weird place. Sales are down, but customers will still spend on the highest-end phones. It's perhaps no wonder, then, that Samsung is betting on artificial intelligence to develop new features for its devices. At this year's MWC, formerly World Mobile Congress, Samsung EVP Patrick Chomet spoke at the WSJ's Journal House. He answered questions from our senior personal tech columnist Joanna Stern. Here are highlights from the event. Patrick, thank you for joining us. What is Samsung thinking about AI? And is it really at the top of the list as you're innovating? Yes, definitely it is. Of course, there's been a lot of focus on the on the voice assistants. So we have Bixby, there have been Alexa and others. But it's much more than that for us. Actually, the biggest application of AI in our device is in the visual experience in the camera. Things like uh, to get the quality of pictures in low lights that we have, I would encourage you to try. What we do is we combine a series of pictures and with a uh, neural engine, optimize all the noise. The 200 megapixel camera is not just about having 200 megapixels as a big number and detail. Uh, in low light condition, we can combine four to 16 pixels and with AI techniques, filter out the noise to get better quality. So AI is very, very deeply embedded in our product. Uh, in the image processing, uh, in the power management, for example, to foresee which app you are using, not using, shut them down and optimize the battery usage. It's all over. What about the generative AI space? So you mentioned Bixby, and I think there's there's a feeling out there. How many people think, and I'm not going to just, we won't focus on Bixby, but we'll say Bixby, Siri, and Alexa are just the smartest in the world. Anyone out there think they're just super smart? All right. How many people out there think ChatGPT and Dolly and Stable Diffusion are just incredible smart. I mean, just are, are at least wowed. Me too. Yeah. Okay. So for years, we've sort of thought, okay, these voice assistants, they're not so smart. No offense to Bixby. Now there's this next wave. Is this the fi- is this really the like realization that this is what the voice assistants are going to be? And are we going to see that integration? Um. I believe we are talking about two different things. The, the, what I call the first generation of voice assistants, so ours, Bixby, and others, I think they were conceived on a, on a model which was some kind of brain assistant, human-centric vision that would control all the devices and the services. And the reality is that the artificial intelligence is much more distributed, but we just said. It's in the, the, the image processing, it's in the applications like Gmail, Gmaps, it's in our own applications. So I, I think we are going for a much more distributed vi- vision. And in that vision, the, the AI GPT, the generative AI techniques, I think they offer great possibilities. But again, not in this kind of centralized way. Uh, you can imagine these technologies used in each and every part of the service area. But with ChatGPT and, and Bing, I've been using Bing a lot, and you are interacting with a computer. You are talking to it in a way that it is human-like which I think we sort of all expected, you know, this is where Siri and Bixby and Alexa were going to go. Is, are you, is Samsung looking at using these technologies to make that conversation better on, on a phone? Absolutely. So we, as you know, we have great partners. Um, <laughs> at least I heard Microsoft is a partner. Microsoft is a partner. Google is a partner, which makes it interesting. So Bixby, <laughs> uh, Bixby is our voice agent to control the phone. So it's a very effective tool to command things on your phone, not only the phone, also we, we use it a lot in the connected home, yeah. uh, come on your uh, uh, appliance TV mm-hmm. and, and things like that. So we are very focused on how to simply command and control mm-hmm. Samsung devices by voice. Uh, the, the generative AI uh, techniques is allowing different things. And our expectation is that we will work with our partners deeply, we have, uh, to leverage all the potential. You're able to use Bixby to respond to a call. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Right? Tell me how that works, and then I want to talk about the generative voice part of that. So how that works, if you are in this situation and some Stephanie would call me, I would answer by text. Mm-hmm. I am in the meeting right now, i call you back later. My voice will play back to her in that uh, voice call. So for now, the voice recording, so it works in Korean and English. Uh, in the Korean language, you can record your own voice. So the, the listener would receive actually your own voice. 
uh, in English, it will come very soon. So we, we love that feature. It's cool. But what you're virtually doing is doing a voice clone. You're making a version of your voice, and then you can type in whatever, and you're going to hear that version of your voice, right? Yes. But it's not generative AI. This is uh, fundamental, uh, well, digital filtering. Okay. We'll, we'll capture the tone of your voice and reproduce that tone, So, which is quite different from a full machine learning generative AI engine. So it won't sound exactly like me. It does. It does. It, okay, so it will. Because it will sound like you. Is that a good idea? That my phone will sound exactly like you and anyone can type in what I sound like? You decided to. Only if you decided to. But will there be any, so say um, somebody decides they want to do a recording of Tom Cruise on this and their voice will be Tom Cruise. Can that, is there restrictions on that? But you can do that today. You can record any voice. There are applications on the internet to modify the tone. You can do that. But this is going to be on Samsung phones. There's more Samsung phones than probably some of these uses. I think it's based on user choice. I don't see a problem with it, really. I think it's quite fun, actually. Okay. Let's shift to talking about VR, AR, your partnership, Samsung, Google, and Qualcomm around headsets. And uh, we talked a little bit about the future, but it sounds like you guys are all three teaming up to make something. What are you making? Mm. You <laughs> want a date, a phone factor? Of... <laughs> I mean, you have a picture, you have a phone, you can erase what I can say. No, I don't have a picture yet, but I can tell you what we do. The reason why we announce is we believe it's a, it's a long journey and there is a lot of work to be done. And a, a characteristic of our ecosystem is we are open. So we don't do it alone. So we are doing a lot of fundamental work with uh, obviously with Qualcomm and Google on the core technologies and finding out the right experiences. But also as we go, we are signaling to a number of ecosystem players that they should be ready to develop applications and apps and services to that ecosystem because we believe uh, when the mixed reality devices will come in, okay, we, we do some good stuff and we have some good apps and so does Google and Qualcomm has great technology, but the real power comes from a richer ecosystem. There are a lot of startups and a lot of smaller companies who will innovate if we give them the right access and if we have enough time to develop uh, on, that, uh, on that platform. And they also have the confidence that big companies like Qualcomm and Samsung and Google are into it for the long term. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you all of you for being here. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. For more tech stories, head over to our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening. <laughs>